Welcome back to our Bible study time together. Thank God for another opportunity to open the Word of God and see what it is that God wants to say to us today. I mentioned to you on this past Sunday that we're going to go to Lake Charles to do some Hurricane Laura relief. I mentioned to you the things that we need for the donation drive and many of you have already started coming by the church this past Monday and I'd like to encourage you to come by because uh, we need cleaning supplies, bleach, toilet paper, uh, cloth, towels, garbage bags, uh, disposable face masks and gloves, hand sanitizer, dish washing liquid, personal hygiene items, non-perishable food items, rubbing alcohol and band-aids. Whatever it is you can contribute, we would appreciate it. And if you're not able to go to the store to purchase anything, you can go online and make a monetary donation and we will make sure that it goes towards our Hurricane Laura relief. In light of life's storms and life's ups and downs, particularly in this pandemic that is seemingly ongoing, I was listening to someone the other day saying that this is our new normal and I remarked to myself, this is never going to be normal for me. I, I miss the house of God. I miss the people of God. And I believe God is going to make a way for us to come back together. But in the meantime, let's study the word of God through this medium. Let's take a look at Psalm number 43. I want to look at all five verses of that psalm where the psalmist asks God to deliver him. Judge me, O God, and plead my cause against an ungodly nation. O deliver me from the deceitful and unjust man. For thou art the God of my strength. Why dost thou cast me off? Why go I mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? O send out thy light and thy truth. Let them lead me. Let them bring me unto thy holy hill and to thy tabernacle. Then will I go unto the altar of God, unto God my exceeding joy. Yea, upon the harp will I praise thee, O God, my God. Why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall yet praise him, who is the health of my countenance and my God. You have perhaps asked yourself or heard the question asked, why do bad things happen to good people? As a matter of fact, I read a book years ago by that very same title, Why Do Bad Things Happen to Good People? Dr. R.C. Sproul, a Reformed theologian and preacher and pastor who died, I think, in 2017, Dr. R.C. Sproul was asked that question by a woman once, why do bad things happen to good people. And Dr. Sproul in his inimitable fashion said to her, there are no good people. That, that answer uh, brings up two things to us. Uh, number one, really there are no good people. The scripture says there's none good, no, not even one. And then it brings up secondly that no one of us, no matter how good we think we are or how righteous we try to be or how we read the Bible or pay our tithes or teach Sunday school or go to church. No one of us is immune from trouble. Job said, man that is born of a woman is of a few days and those few days are full of trouble. Jesus said, in this world, you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer for I have overcome the world. It has been conjectured that this is a psalm of David when he was running from the rebellion of his own son Absalom, or it is a psalm of Hezekiah when he was being attacked by the Assyrian army. But whether or not it is a psalm of David or a psalm of Hezekiah, all of us can relate to the words of the psalmist when, when we are under attack, be it satanic attack or attack of our health, or attack of our finances, or attack in our family, or an attack of our faith. All of us have, have said the words that are written here in this psalm in one form or another. Because in verses 1, 2, and verse number 3 is the believer's cry. The believer's cry is in verses 1, 2, and verse 3. Let's look at them again. Judge me, O God, and plead my cause against an ungodly nation. Oh, deliver me 
from the deceitful and unjust man. For thou art the God of my strength. Why dost thou cast me off? Why go I mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? O oh, send out thy light and thy truth. Let them lead me. Let them bring me unto thy holy hill and to thy tabernacle. The psalmist is crying, first of all, for liberty. He wants to be free from the slander of men. The psalmist talks about uh, a deceitful and unjust man. Many of us know what it means to have been slandered, to be lied on, to be deceived, or to be undermined, to have our good, evil spoken of. He wants to be delivered. He wants liberty from the slander of evil, deceitful men. Everybody who smiles and laughs in your face is not your friend. Sometimes it's a, it's a deceitful kiss. It's a deceitful handshake. And uh, the psalmist is asking God for deliverance, for liberty from this kind of deceit. And then not only is he asking for liberty from the slander of men, he wants to be delivered from the silence of God. I think I could handle the slander of men. My problem is dealing with the silence of God. Sometimes we pray and God just doesn't say anything. God just doesn't come to our rescue. The psalmist says, why have you cast me off? It may look like God is not paying attention and it may seem like God is not watching, but even though you don't see him, he sees you. And then he wants to be liberated from the sorrow of his heart. He's mourning. He is, he is grieving. Uh, David perhaps grieving because the son who sat at the table with him, the son that he fed and nurtured and raised is a son who turned against him. Or uh, Hezekiah, who is one of Israel's most godly kings, is being attacked by the Assyrians. And it would seem that God would come to his rescue. There are times when God is silent and it seems that God is, is distant. So the psalmist is praying that God would give him liberty from the slander of men, from the silence of God, and from the sorrow of his heart. But not only is he praying in those verses for liberty, but in verses 1, 2, and 3, he's asking God for leadership. He desires God's word. He says, send out your light and your truth. Uh, the psalmist says, the word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my pathway. The word of God is truth, uh, undefiled uh, truth. The word of God is God's spoken truth. Uh, he wants God to send light and then he wants God to send his truth. All of us who are Christians, who are serious about our faith, earnestly desire to get into the Word of God. One of the things I do every morning, I wake up early in the morning and I read a devotional guide and then I read a proverb that corresponds to the day of the month. If it's today is the 22nd, I read Proverbs uh, number 22 or chapter 22. Uh, I try to get into the Word of God because the only way you can be strengthened, uh, the only way you can be knowledgeable of God is to desire God's word. And then he desire God's way. He says to God, lead me. I can't lead myself. You can't lead yourself. We are weak. We are frail creatures of the moment. We, we are sometimes right and sometimes wrong. I tried to mention it Sunday, uh, talking in the sermon about uh, ethics that are sometimes relational and situational. Truth, uh, that is your truth, is sometimes relational and situational truth. But truth, when it is really truth, it's God's truth. All truth is God's truth. And if, if God would lead us, if we would be in the way of God, the steps of a good man, the scripture says, are ordered by the Lord. And then he desires God's worship. Uh, after he has been led by the word, and desired God's way, the psalmist wants to give God worship. In verse number three, he says, Oh, send out your light and your truth. Let them lead me. Let, me, let them bring me unto thy holy hill and to thy tabernacle. We're not in church physically right now, but wherever you are 
You need to make that your sanctuary. You need to make that the place where you give God praise and give God glory and give God honor. Sooner or later, we're going to get back in the sanctuary as the corporate body of Christ. But right now, your living room could be your tabernacle, uh, where you sit in your den or wherever you sit to read the Bible or meditate can be your sanctuary. It can be your holy hill. It can be your tabernacle. All of us need God to liberate us and then we need God's leadership. Look with me in verse number four. Verses one, two, and three is the believer's cry. Verse number four is the believer's commitment. Look with me at verse number four. Then will I go unto the altar of God, unto God my exceeding joy. Yea, upon the harp will I praise thee, O God, my God. The believer's commitment is after God has delivered me from the slander of men and the silence of God and the sorrow of my heart, the believer's commitment is that he promises that he will offer God sacrifices. Now, we, are, uh, we, don't, we don't offer sacrifices on the altar like they did in the Old Testament with uh, rams of consecration and bullocks on the altar. We are a living sacrifice. Uh, we offer ourselves, our bodies, as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, Romans 12 says, which is our reasonable service. And we are not conformed to the pattern of this world, but transformed by the renewing of our minds. That's how, that's how we make our sacrifice to God. And then in that same verse, he promises to offer God song. He said, I will get on my harp and sing songs to God. Those of us who are saved know that one of the signs that you know that you've been born again, the scripture says, there's melody in your heart unto the Lord. That melody you may not be able to sing in the choir or lead a song, or like my mama used to say, you may not be able to carry a note to the post office. But if you love God, there's a song in your heart. And the psalmist says, not only will I offer sacrifices, but I will offer songs. Verses one, two, and three is the believer's cry. Verse number four, the believer makes a commitment. But in verse number five, the believer has confidence. Look with me at verse number five. Why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall yet praise him who is the health of my countenance and my God. The psalmist personally challenges himself to have hope in God. No matter how dark it looks, no matter how dim or dismal the situation, my hope, my trust, my confidence is still in God. And then he has a profound certainty in that same verse where he says, for I will yet praise him. When you read the book of Habakkuk, Habakkuk says, though there be no cattle in the stall, though there be no fruit on the vine, yet will I give God praise. Uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said, uh, we're not careful to answer you in this matter, for the God we serve is able, and he will deliver us out of your hands. But if not, we're still not going to bow down and worship your golden image. When you have confidence in God, when your hope is in God, you are committed and confident knowing that there is a certainty that comes with our salvation. We are sure that all things work together for good to them that love God and to those who are the called according to his purpose. I want to thank you for continuing to be faithful in your giving. Uh, we are still doing ministry and we are still doing missions here at the church and we could not do it without your generosity. Thank you so much. God bless you, and I look forward to seeing you again on next Wednesday. God bless you.